C tau I. One of the C's cancels out. I is now a function of Z. Now this is our differential equation. So what does this differential equation tell us? An intensity of radiation comes in and there's after passing through a certain distance through the cavity or the medium, the outgoing intensity can be larger or smaller than the incoming intensity. And if amplification is to occur, the outgoing intensity must be larger than the incoming intensity. And this is the differential equation that governs how the intensity changes with distance as light passes through the active medium. This is what this differential equation is telling us. So let's put all of this into one constant. Let's call it g. It's a function of omega. The gain into i. Now you can notice that the gain, how much light amplification, this is a measure of how much light amplification is occurring. If this is positive, if this is positive, amplification occurs. If this is positive, amplification occurs. And G, as you can see, depends upon the population difference. Higher the population inversion, higher will be the gain. And if you solve this equation, which is trivial, Your differential equation is this di g omega i z. You solve this, what do you get? Kya milta apko i z? Some i naught. So depending upon whether this is positive or negative, amplification or de-amplification can take place. This is called the gain of the laser medium. For laser amplification to take place, for laser action, this gain has to be positive, which means that this number has to be positive. There has to be a population inversion. And as you can see, the gain is dependent on the frequency. It's dependent upon the lifetime of the state as well. So the last thing I would like to tell you how to sustain laser action. Now when a photon, or photons are traveling inside the cavity, they are making round trips. They are being reflected by the mirror. Now the mirror M1 has a deflectivity R1. If R1 is 1, it's a perfectly reflecting mirror. But if R1 is say 0.95, it will absorb 5% of the energy. Similarly, we have R2, the second mirror. R2 can be less than 1. In fact, one of the mirrors has to have a reflectivity less than 1 because some light has to, has to be coupled out of the laser. Right? So these mirrors cannot be made perfect. Even though nowadays technology has advanced to such an extent that you can have almost perfect mirrors, but still at least one of the mirrors has to be have a reflectivity less than one so some light can go out. 
and we also know that the lasing cavity or the laser amplifier contains a medium it has some absorption at a particular wavelength so there is some absorption coefficient for the medium as well so there are different kinds of losses so lasing action can only be maintained if the gain overcomes the losses if there is enough gain that you overcome the losses otherwise the losses will win over the gain therefore enough gain is required in a round trip enough gain is required in a round trip so as to overcome the losses and if the gain just equals the losses there will be no light output so the power output will be how much energy is increased and you subtract the losses from that so if the gain is just sufficient to overcome the losses you will get oscillations you will get oscillations but there will be no power output because all the gain is being used to overcome the losses therefore the gain has to go above the losses it has to overcome the losses so there's a condition that has to be satisfied and that condition is that if r1 is the reflectivity of the first mirror r2 is the reflectivity of the second mirror there is some zeta which takes into account the absorption losses and you multiply this by the gain which is exponent g and how much does the for the distance the photon travels in one round trip is 2l this has to be equal to 1 so this is the condition for sustaining laser operation if this condition is satisfied if this condition is satisfied such that this product is greater than 1 you will get an output beam if this product is less than 1 the losses will dominate over the gain this is an amplification term theek hai ye amplification term hai one se bigger hai ye zahir hai one se bigger hogi ye aur ye sab one se smaller hai 0.95 0.93 0.92 0.9 aur ye bhi one se chota hai so these are all losses the losses are lumped into these terms and this is the gain so for lasing operation the gain has to cross a certain threshold the gain has to cross a certain threshold before lasing can begin so the last curve i would make today is ye baat samajh aa gayi aapko so if you plot the pump power on one axis how much pumping energy you are giving in and here i plotted the gain as the pump is increased the gain increases the gain increases till it reaches a certain threshold value which can be found by solving this equation you solve this equation the solution for this equation will give you the threshold gain no lasing operation takes place when g is smaller than the threshold value because enough population inversion has not been achieved to sustain laser operation or in other words in this region in this region the losses overcome the gain but once the gain goes beyond this power because the gain depends upon the pump how much energy you are supplying because that is controlling the population inversion then it becomes locked at a certain value 
And if you plot the intensity of the laser light uh, around the same axis, up to this point, you do not get any lasing operation. You do not get any lasing operation. Only after the threshold gain has been achieved, which has overcome the losses inside the cavity, you get an output light intensity, which is laser light. So this is how the intensity of laser light varies with the pump. And this is how the gain varies with the pump. In this region, delta N, becomes locked. It does not change. The population inversion that has been achieved remains what it is. It cannot go beyond that because if you want to increase the population inversion, the stimulated emission will increase. And the stimulated emission is in fact the laser operation. So any extra pumping energy is giving you the output light. It's not changing the population inversion. So this is the general scheme of how a laser works. So in our next lecture, which will take place on Thursday at the same time, we will discuss the characteristics of laser light. Why is the laser monochromatic? What is the coherence of laser light? And what are the different kinds of lasers? So thank you very much for coming and I hope to see you again on Thursday.